Graham from Aaron Games here and welcome to part two of the introductory session of the Advanced Fighting Fantasy um, actual play campaign. If you haven't seen the first uh, video yet, I strongly recommend you go and watch that one first. Uh, we've got giant rats, we've got sewer fatbergs, we've got demon's heads belching fire, all sorts of interesting stuff. If you have seen it, then you will know that where we left it was just as they had entered uh, or opened the door to a room with four um, pillars of purple light coming down from the ceiling uh, and a pattern of whirls and circles on the floor with one other door out of the room. And so we'll go to the characters and say, so then, what are you going to do? Beam me up, Scotty. It looks very much like a Star Trek uh, transporter, except that they're not wavering and there's not the little zingy noise and they're not moving and nothing's teleporting in or out. What does Zalek think? Yeah. Does anyone who might know what these markings on the floor mean? Well, first of all, I'll do a lore check to check out the markings on the floor. Give me a magic lore roll then, please. Yeah, hold on, bear with me. Nope. You're not certain. They're, they are magical of some sort, but you're not really certain what they signify. And then, again, on the purple pillars of light. Okay. Fire. Well, they certainly are magical and could be to do with summoning, maybe. And there's one in each corner of the room. Mm. Hmm. I suggest if we can we ignore this room well, that's the direction we want to go isn't it down to the sea well that was when we were escaping from the sewers I suppose we're not escaping from the sewers anymore are we right. well we better go and see what's the other end of this corridor then so are you just sort of backing up as you are? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we might as well stay there till I've gone down to this end and okay. made sure it doesn't fall into a huge pit or something. I'll tell you what, I'm going to move to here, taking cover behind the dragon's head. Okay. From where, from where uh, Hulan is. And Hulan opens the door. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you're all ready. Mm hmm. Okay, well this room has one other exit. Four columns of purple light descend from the ceiling but barely illuminate the room at all. The floor is inscribed with a complex pattern of whirls and circles, but cobwebs are strung across most of the ceiling and between most of the walls. Spiders. Mm. Well, this is the same as the other room, but it's probably full of spiders too. <laughs> it could be worse. There could be snakes on here with you. Probably magical spiders. Why does it have to be spiders? It's well, always spiders. spiders. I quite Let like spiders. Go down. I'm going to go down to where Hulan is and look at those swirls and circles of cobwebs. Exactly the same as the other ones. Mm, I cannot comprehend what these magical symbols mean at this moment. Right. Well, let's close this door. We're going to have to go into one of these rooms. It's just how we do it. Yeah. Who's feeling brave? <laughs> Always a million dollar question. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Glam Tanker wouldn't abandon me in the darkness down here. Hmm. Can I make a animal law roll, Graham? See if these webs are flammable. Uh, webs are flammable, yeah. Okay. But to get to most of them, you'd have to go into the room. Okay. Now you're all ceiling height. Uh, and across the walls as well. Okay. Down to about waist height. Right. Have we got anything heavy? 
we could chuck into the room. Well, there's a chair stuck in the other bit. Yeah, um, we got to use the door chair. again. To get that yeah, you got a door. It's a good point, actually. We have a door, don't we? And there's there's no flame coming out of the demon's head at the moment. No, there isn't. Is there? It's not no. like burning no. its way through the door. No. If there's no um, flame coming out of the demon's head, can I prize these gems out of his eyes? They don't look like gems. They were just red glowing eyes. Um, I wouldn't touch them if I was you. <laughs> okay. I mean, for all you know, it's actually a demon with its head stuck through the wall. Well, I'll have a demon law roll then. <laughs> well, I've never seen one before, so... You can have a demon law roll. Excuse me. Oh, look at that. It cheated on a success and then failed. You have no idea. It could well be a demon with its head stuck through the wall. Oh my god. Well, <sighs> alright, I'll get the door. Okay. Drag it down the corridor. Yep. Excuse me, Zim. Yep. I'll put the door on the floor in the room. Okay. You put it on the floor. Does anything happen? Nothing at all. How big is that room? About 15 feet across so you could put the door in the middle jump onto the door and then be at the other door could you like walk across it could well oh what i'll try and do then is i'll drag the drag the door back what i'm gonna try and do graham yeah his director is chuck the door so it's near enough the exit okay I could leap onto the door. Yep. And then be able to reach the other exit door. Okay. Yep. You can sort of skim it across the floor. Oh, everyone, I'm going to try and leap on this door. You might want to get ready in case anything's going to happen. Yep. So where is everyone else standing as you leap across? I can't see. Can you put it on? Oh, we're, we're kind of trapped in the corridor. Okay. So Hulan leaps onto the other door. On, onto the flat door flat on the ground. Yeah. And as you do so, mm. the whirls in the floor fill up with purple light. Mm. And appearing in the purple light are four skeletons. Um. Right on the street. Yeah. With, of course, ah. you, you standing right in between two of them. They instantly appear, do they? Like They appear, oh. yep. They're wielding swords, but they don't appear to be armoured. Ah! Skeletons. So, what is Hulan going to do? If I leap back to the corridor, what happens? I don't know. Is that what you want to do? Or well, like, do they hack at me as I leap? Or uh, well, yeah, they will try and fight you, and you would get a defensive com. You would get a combat roll, but if you win, you wouldn't do any damage. You just avoid the blows. Nah, come on. Let's get. Let's fight them. Skeletons are going to stay here. Skeletons. Come okay. help me. And is it I'm is it time to use... to use an ability or? Yep, I think it is. And do you want to use sunburst or smite? With I'm with sunburst, get everything in this room. Everything in this room would take one stamina each round and would be at minus two skill for two rounds. Yeah, sunburst them. Okay. The light of Glantanga, aid me. Okay. I'll hold my hold my sword out. Does that everything out. include him? Ooh. Sorry, say that again. Does that everything include include Hula? No, it's all undead. <coughs> all right, it's just undead. All, all undead okay. would take one stamina damage around, and would be at minus two skill. I think you're living. Yeah, and this yeah, is last time I looked. Need to tell us right now. So, do you wish to include this round in it or not? 
Yeah, straight away. Come on. Okay, straight away. Right, and Zimrika, what are you going to do? Oh, Kazan. And I'll charge him. You're going to charge him. And Joban? I'll follow him. You'll follow him. And Zilic? Mm, uh, I'll wait here. <laughs> I, will, I will also cast here, which is a cantrip. Yep. Down the corridor to listen what's going on in case anyone starts coming down the corridor towards me. Okay. Apart from that, I'll just pretty much wait here. Okay, wait there. Right, so I think Skeleton 13 is going to try and fight Joe Barn. Skeleton 6 is going to try and fight Zimrika. And the other two skeletons are going to try and fight Hulam. So all skeletons take um, damage this round so Hulan raises mm -hmm. his hands and calls for the aid of Glantanka bright sunshine fills the room I raise raise my raise my sword and it like the blade yep and it emits light it's the sort of sunshine where you really need sunglasses it's blindingly bright it doesn't seem to inconvenience you too much but the skeletons look like they would scream if they had a voice. So we will start with skeleton 13. And that fights Joe Barn. Okay. Oh, that's not a bad roll. But I get a 14. Mm. So if you roll an armor roll for me, and I inflict four damage. Are you remembering your minus two? I'm not remembering my minus two. Very well remembered. Uh, so in fact, you win, so you need to roll your damage instead. Ah. Thank you for reminding me. Such is the life of a GM. There's always too much to remember. Uh, no, no mm. Yep. No, I will have to apply that for future uh, skeletons. So, we'll do skeleton six against Zimrika. So if you roll your com combat first. Zim? Sorry. Do your combat roll first. All right, okay. Hang on, change the weapon. Not the best roll. No. But I rolled a one and a two for a total of seven. <laughs> Which is frankly pathetic. So you do three damage to number six. And then your Chris beats my seven easily and so the Chris does oh yep you demolish number six cool. it collapses into a heap skeletons five and nine are both attacking Hulan mm -hmm. so they just have a minus one so we'll do skeleton five first he gets an outnumbering bonus but he's at minus one <coughs> and that's a total of 12 but you get a 15 so you hit him mm. okay so that's three damage to number five and number nine tries to attack you with its minus one modifier And only gets a grand total of nine. And so swings a sword at you and doesn't connect at all. Ha ha. So at the start of the following round, skeleton 13 takes point of damage and crumbles into dust. Skeleton uh, five, who you hit, Mm -hmm. takes a point of damage and crumbles into dust 
Skeleton 9 takes another point of damage. But he's now all on his own. Oh, thank you, Glen Tanker. Right. Yeah, I was about to ask, is Joe Barn going to join in the, uh, the, 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 the the fairly round thumping that this skeleton is going to get? Um, so, It'd be a shame to miss out, it really would. I do get a minus two. I might as well roll mine first. Um, and my total is uh, that's a 13, which is not bad, considering I had a minus two. But you all get a plus two for outnumbering it. Mm -hmm. So if you all roll your attack rolls with a plus two bonus, I got a 13. So Ooh. Hulan hits it. Joe Bahan definitely hits it. Very nearly criticals it. And Zim also hits it. Well, you can roll all your damages, but it's it's only got three left. So we do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That one yes. doesn't even have a chance to crumble into dust. That one is pulverised into a pile of bones. Good. And the light, That's the bright, blinding there. sunlight, fades from the room. Mm. Zilic, come quickly before more turn up. Okay, I'm hearing that conversation, so I pick it up immediately, dash down the corridor into the room. And Hulan is opening the other door? Yeah, because there might be. It might come around like more skeletons every minute or something. It might well do. And beyond, you can see a uh, passageway leading down to a crossroads. Well, I'll go to the... I might as well just go to the crossroads. Well, as you get to the crossroads, you see to the south, five feet away, is a door. To the west, 15 feet away, is a door. To the east is a collapsed passageway, and you can see an arm sticking out of it. <laughs> oh, like a human arm. Well, in fact, um, yes, yeah, so this tunnel has, in the recent past, collapsed, filling it with huge stones and ancient mortar. Protruding un from under one particularly big stone is a human arm clutching a pickaxe. Footprints lead from here across the corridor to the to the west and through a doorway. Okay. Now, what's the state of decay of the arm? Oh, fresh. Not even really okay. covered in much Damn. dust. A little bit of dust from the collapse, but not much. This bit looks safe. Come down and have a look. I can't see. Can you put it on party view? Uh, no, I can't share it at the moment, I don't think. Uh, party view. I'll just double check it. We haven't got all of... Ah, party vision and movement. Try that. It's just that. It's really hard to tell. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. That Thank help. you. Okay. Um, I'll just come to here, wait in the room. And, and wait for someone to... To move. To move. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to step up here towards this unfortunate person. Okay. To, to see what's happened. But careful in case more of the ceiling collapses. Okay. Zimra, are you moving maybe, down? Maybe, maybe don't come up behind me in case the ceiling collapses. Can I have a look at the structural integrity of the tunnel? Uh, in the tunnel that you can see looks fine. Remember, I can see in the dark. Yeah, the tunnel you can see looks fine. It looks sound. Right, I'm going to come down to the crossroads. Yep. And use my same analytical skills to look at the structural integrity of all three corridors, west, south, and east. Okay, give me just a straight magic roll then. Might be worth mentioning to anyone watching this that magic is like intelligence. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so one one of the rules is normally you base a a, a special skill like um, city law or monster law or whatever on your skill, but of course wizards generally have low skill but high magic. So the option is for any character with a higher magic, they can base the skills on that because skill is your general intelligence and cunningness and experience and knowledge but so is magic so you can use whichever one is better for you 
and Zillick peers at the roof. Yeah, to the west, it doesn't look like it's about to. Sorry, to the east, it doesn't look like it's about to imminently collapse. Um, but something has caused it to collapse on top of this poor unfortunate. Hmm. Does it look safe then, Zillick? It doesn't look it's like it's strange. about to come down anytime soon. Not now. I would say, in my estimation, D, for the next five minutes, you were probably safe. Yep. Okay. Mm. Let me go Wait, and see. That does not I'm... include you starting to pull away at the stones <laughs> in that pile. No, this is absolutely true. It's fine at the moment. Well, I'll go and have a look then at the, the unfortunate soul. You can see a leather clad arm with tattoos yeah. and a pickaxe. And would it be possible to try and pull him out from under the rubble? Well, you could probably pull his arm. <laughs> uh, the stone that's landed on top of him is probably in the region of 10 tonne. Right. What what okay. colour is his arm? Human colour. As in no, no, no. as in Cullian human colour. Human pale. No, human, human tan. Human tanned, tanned and tattooed. Okay, let me do put it another way. How necrotic is his flesh? No, it's not. This thing's only collapsed recently. Yep, past couple of Somehow, days maybe. Someone... It, it's quite cool down here, so a couple of days, two, three, four days, maybe? That that person's not been here for longer than two weeks. Okay. Pass me pickaxe. Yeah, well, um, I'll take the pickaxe. Okay. I'll say a little prayer for him. Okay. And the footprints leading from here went across to the room, the door to the west, although one pair also goes to the door to the south. Does the um, tattoos on his hands mean anything? They look like just Cullian tattoos, to be honest. Quite a right. few of the rougher sorts have them. Let me have a look at his tattoos, Graham. Okay. In my knowledge, are those just like sailor tattoos or are they magical tattoos? Yeah, you can have a magic law roll. You know, you know the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there are several practitioners of magic tattoos in Kull, but these are just normal. The, the, those are just decorative tattoos. Ignore that. It's a distraction. Pass me the pick. <laughs> All right. There you go. Have a pickaxe. Is it magical? No, nope. it's a pickaxe. How much is it worth? A couple of gold, I think. Standard. I'll give it back to him. Standard pickaxe, not magical. Obviously attempted to dig through the tunnel and collapsed on him. Next. Okay. Well, we might as well keep it. It's handy. I'll stick it in my backpack or whatever, or attach okay. it to my belt. Right. Which way are we going now, then? Are we going straight west or south? I kind of vote south for no reason other than I feel like we're moving south generally. Which way did the footprints go? Um, it looks like several pairs went to the door in the west, but only one pair went to the door in the south. Hmm. There was a bit of milling around at the crossroads. So is there any origin location of these footsteps? I'll try and trace them back to where they've come from. Yep, they've come from the collapse section. So four people came down this corridor to the east, the last person got crushed to death and three people passed through it. Two went to the west, one went to the south. Yep. And they haven't come back. They haven't it's come a, back because they're, they're it, all either dead or they've found an exit. It's a bit hard to tell if any came back from the west because there's quite a few pairs of footprints or crisscrossing. As for the south, no, hasn't come back. Yeah, well. I think that would indicate that the people in the west how, how many footsteps went south how many peoples how many one, one person went south so two went west like I said one went south none of them have come back so actually is there more than two people's footprints in the west corridor probably well yeah. it, it's a bit hard to tell because 
there's been some sort of churning around, it's a bit hard to tell. It's it's certainly more than one person has gone west. However, the heels in the imp- in the dust imprints would indicate which direction they were heading in. So I'll look for the heels. Have they have they gone west and then come back? Give, give me a, give me an awareness roll. So I haven't got awareness, so it's based on skill. Awareness based on skill. Is yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh dear. You can't really make out any clear heel prints. In which case, one of you look for heel prints and which direction they point in. Concentrate on the west corridor. The south is clear to me. The west is fog. Anyone else yeah. want to give me an awareness roll? I'll have a look. He seems to be on to something. Well, yes, you don't think anyone came back from that way. Hmm. Doesn't look like anyone came back from the west. But then, doesn't look like anyone came back from the south either. Nope. Nope. Therefore, we have got no positive inclination into which direction to take. I say south. I say west. Oh. Hmm. Oh, you contrarian. (laughs) Is it come to a democratic vote? No, I'm just thinking. Wait a second. Are we having a democracy? Just getting my orientation. It's behind the demon head. Yeah, you see, if, it could be the rest of the demon behind there. <laughs> Until an hour ago, I vaguely knew you from someone that I passed in a corridor when I was dashing off to my lessons in no, the morning. You, at you've o'clock. you've you've had a bit to do with them for for mm. for a few months at least. So I know he's a contrarian, yeah. do I? Yeah. Well, if Zim wants to. Head west. I'm going to follow my cousin. Does that mean I've got wings? I think I think you're the one next to the door. Oh, well, I, I, I open the door. I don't care. Okay. I don't Keep really know you not Adam, so carry on. Right. <clears throat> Two dead tomb robbers lie sprawled in the middle of this room, hands clutching shovels and packs on their backs. Their bellies are ripped well, open. Why they haven't come back. A large pile of what looks like old cloth is heaped up in the far corner, and the dust of this floor is disturbed right across the room. Hmm. So, they went to this room and they died. Don't go in there. Yeah, that doesn't look like a good room to go in, does it? Their packs are fairly full. Stop right there. <laughs> Isn't that the start of a, a Spice Girl song? What? Yeah. <laughs> GM, you don't want to admit that. Don't worry. That's, that's an obscure reference OOC anyway. Yes. Fair Ooh. enough. Right, so there is there is a big pile of cloth in the far corner. There are two dead tomb robbers uh, with backpack shovels and so on and disturbed what? dust. Do they look like they've been bleeding? No. No blood. Do they look do they look like they've been squashed flat? No, they've been they've been ripped open but no blood. What ripped do you mean ripped open? open? What's that mean? Well it looks like their abdomens are ripped open. Come there's no blood. Look. But there's no blood. Uh, something sucked the blood out and ripped them open at the same time. But it's not even on the floor. The dust right, okay. the, the dust on the floor is not stained with blood. I just want to check in my memory banks that there's no creature that bursts in or out of the stomachs of people. Uh, you can have a monster law roll if you have monster law. No, nope, mm. magic. Okay. Trouble is, we're going to need we need money if we're going to just flee the city. Oh, what's going uh, yeah, tricky. How near is the nearest body? Can't think. Uh, about seven or eight feet away. I'm going to move in a square. Right, see okay. what happens. Careful, cousin. Right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lurching out of the pile of cloth. Are oh, you fucking madman? Ah. 
two of these. Oh, I hate the mystery ones. Mystery envelopes. <laughs> oh. What what could be in the Shoot mystery envelope? Just have to wait Don't a few seconds for that to upload. So, creature about it's your too late, Pandora. It's a creature about your height with various tentacles ending in suckers coming sort of from its mouth. Big claws. Big vein belly. Has it arrived yet? All right. Ooh. So they have been had their innards sucked out. No, 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 no. Okay. Foul so, creature. Foul creature. Yep. Thanks. So that's you see, that's the good thing. I can until someone IDs it. I can just call it a foul creature. So we have two of these foul creatures. What? Hi. A foul or fell? Foul. What is Zim going to do? Uh, wait a second. So I've, I've, hold on, I've just got an image of this thing sprouting stuff out of its head. Yep. Oh, I see. It's, it's literally called a foul creature. Oh, well, that's the only description you know of at the moment. No one's identified like, it yet. You don't know what it is. As soon as you identify I can click on the ID button. Can I identify it? You can have a magic, uh, you can have a monster law, monster law roll. I am. Yep. I know what they are. You know what they are, do you? Yeah, because the eye, you've left the eye guns on. Yeah, it should. It should. It's not blunt, though. Oh, okay. It's well, pretty. that's that's fine. I mean, it pro you you're not going to know what they are anyway. But um, yeah, go on. Give me, oh, give me. Oh, oh you, you had a monster, uh, monster law. Uh, you think they might be blood lurchers, but you don't know much else about them. Hmm. What the hell? And the fact I've identified them. Can I not? Can I not try and probe the rest of my memory to, to the rest of it? Uh, not at this moment. No. Okay. Thank you. So, Zim, what are you going to do? I'm backing off into the corner and drawing my other weapon. Okay. Hulan, you're next. Um. Hmm. Is Joban? Are you? Even vaguely a warrior, or you just join yeah, no, in? I'm, I'm more warrior than uh, sorcerer at the moment. Right. Okay. In that case, I'll go up there. You can go first. Okay. To attack it, Joe Bum. I'll run away. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll step into there. Okay. And Zilic. Get my sword and shield ready. I am do it. Wait a second. Hold on. Are these these aren't undead, are they? They're not undead. No. <coughs> no. And they're not demons. I will step to here. Okay. <coughs> are you casting a spell? Hold on. Maybe. Uh, nothing that would directly affect that particular incident. So okay. Ignore me. Nothing. No. Nothing. Okay. This round. So, this uh, lurch nine is coming in here to attack Zimrika. So, Joe Barn, which one do you want to help with? I'll help Hulam, I think. Okay. Right. So we'll do Zimrika first. So you're fighting Blood Lurch Zimrica number nine. <clears throat> so Blood Lurch number nine. Rolls. Uh, if can you, uh, Zim, can you roll your attack roll, please? Okay. Uh, Fourteen. I roll pretty badly and I only get a thirteen. Oof. So you hit it. I have to hit first, or I'm in trouble. So you do three damage. 
He's always tried to dodge. It's not that good. Isn't it? <clears throat> well, he, he dodges as armour, so... Perhaps um, occasionally you might explain how the skills work to those people that haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, I think, I think this might be a useful, useful time. So um, when, you, when you roll your, your attack, you're simply rolling your 2d6. You add on your skill, um, which is your, your base stat. You add on uh, your special skill if you have swords or, or axes or daggers or something like that to get a combat total. So in that one, um, Zimrika got uh, a 14. He only rolled a four and a one, but because he's got um, plus nine. Have you got plus nine? I don't know. That's, that's... Okay, well that's a bit that I thought you, it would be plus seven. Uh, I, you work it out. You work it out. I, I was yeah. quite. Okay. Well, I'll come. Back. I haven't got that. I think it's. I think it's actually misworked it out there somehow. Um, it's, added, it's added the plus four instead of plus two, isn't it? It has. So I think the rule set slightly has gone a little bit wrong. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh well, we'll skim over it now. We're not too worried. Uh, if you hit, then you get to roll your. Um, damage dice and a character has so Zimrika here if we put his character on uh, there you can see his falchion does two damage on a roll of one three damage on a roll of a two three four five four damage on the roll of a six five damage on the roll of a seven and yes you can get a seven due to magic items certain abilities and so on and then armor works in the same way. You roll one dice and it stops a certain amount of damage. Um, so you inflict three damage on him and he doesn't have any armor. So okay. the other two are fighting blood lurch. Oh, uh, can you roll your Chris attack, your dagger attack for me? Uh, that also hits. So, oh, doing another three damage. So. Zimrika uses two separate weapons, um, a sword and a curvy Chris dagger. It does mean he doesn't have a shield, so he's a little bit more susceptible to taking damage, but if he hits with both, he can actually do... Well, uh, hint, hint, I can't afford a shield. Quite a lot more damage. Well, yeah, I can't afford a shield, which is another thing. So <laughs> Hulan and Joban both attack the Blood Lurcher. Mm -hmm. Blood Lurcher 8. This one, they each get an additional plus one on their combat total because they're outnumbering it. And we get an 18 and a 15. Oh, my roll is only a 14. So my poor rolling continues. So because they both beat it, both of them hit it. Both of them inflict three damage. It doesn't have any armor. So it gets hit twice. So it's not going well for the blood lurchers, but all three of you rolled really, really well that round. So on the following round, do you wish to do anything different or do you wish to just fight it? I'm going to carry on. Carry on fighting. So we'll come back to Zimrika again. And... Um, so Zimrika, your attack roll. Okay. One again. Okay. So that's a, so it's added two extra more than it should. So your total is actually a 14. And my, and my total this round is a 15. Okay. You haven't got your modifier as a plus two or something, have you, James? Or I thought that wipes off. No, I haven't. No, I, I think I think what it's doing is it's reading his sword skill for both his sword and his dagger and applying both. I mm. have to do that though, because I'm only 
using one weapon at a time. Yeah, I think I think somewhere in the code. I mean, this this the code for these weapon selections was only finished about two days ago, and I think there's an error in there. And I yeah. thought I tested it, but obviously I didn't test it enough. So there wasn't a skill that gave you additional, was there? No, it's it's just I think it's reading both, but that's fine. I've noted it. I mean, the the rule set is very much as I posted videos before, very much a work in progress. And it is being modified, updated, and tweaked all the time. And this is sort of a, a, a bit of a an error checking um, session as well. But unfortunately, the blood lurcher does hit you and inflicts four damage. Ooh. So you need to roll your dodge to see if you. Um, yeah, which well, is my dodge is like equivalent to light armor. Isn't it? Well, you've got your dodge track on your character sheet, so you should be able to just click the dice on that. Yeah, but just so people know, the dodge is... Yeah, so dodging, as you get better and better and better at dodging, you can save more and more and more damage from a blow, just like you can wear heavier armour. But to wear armour, you need an armour skill anyway. So to avoid damage, you need either armour or um, dodge. You've gone for dodge. Unfortunately, in this case, it didn't save you, so you take four stamina damage. Re oh. Reducing your oh. stamina from an initial of 10 down to a current of six. So mm. I'll let you adjust that on your carrot sheet just so it appears on the screen here, and then we can move on. Uh -uh. It's not let me do it. Is it not letting you do it? I can change the initial. Can't okay. I'll change the current down to six. So, on the other side of the room, I'll let uh, I'll I'll roll my one first for this one. Oh dear, that's a terrible roll. Double two, total of twelve. Yeah. Hulan also gets a twelve. So in that case, neither of them hit each other. It is a draw. So no. A, a, a no score draw whereas Joe Barn because he gets higher hits the blood lurcher inflicting three damage and that is enough to drop that to the ground splat splat it goes and as it does blood starts to leak from its tentacles now the one that attacked uh, Zimricker and hit him hit him with tentacles uh, it, it clawed him, but it also hit him with tentacles, and you can feel them beginning to suck some blood from you. Yeah. So on the following round, okay, we're gonna. So Hulan's coming round yeah. to join it. Uh, Zilic, are you casting anything to support, or are you just? It is badly injured that one that's left. No, I see no reason to engage in anything further at this moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I'll roll for the blood lurcher. You all get a plus two for outnumbering. But I did get a 17 to try and hit Zimrika. Yeah. So Zimrika, roll yours first. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter which order. So Joe Barn doesn't manage to hit it. He rushes across, but it's a pretty poor attempt. Hulan has much better luck and does hit it. And Zim? Hang on, has he killed it? Well, no, it's it all goes simultaneously, so you still have to roll. Uh, right, okay. He will hit it and he will do two damage to it. 14. And you critical. Ooh. Whoa. Wait, why why has Joe Barn and Zim Ripper got plus nine? Uh, because they get plus two because they're outnumbering. Thanks. Right, so I've just shared a table with you. Uh, James, can you click on the dice at the top of that table to roll a critical result, please? I don't want me to roll the damage then. Not yet. Mm. So it takes maximum weapon damage and is disarmed. You can't disarm it, but you do do maximum damage. Can I cut off a tentacle? Yeah, you can cut off some tentacles. You, I'll even let you... Actually, you cut off one of its claws. Okay. So you cut one of its hands off, and you inflict uh, four damage, which is the maximum for a sword. And between that and 
uh, Hulan hitting it, that one also drops to the ground. I'm going to say, I've got another attack. But... With a splat. Hmm. Are the tentacles still attached to him? No, they pull off with a horrible <laughs> noise when it falls to the ground. Oh. Are they oozing anything? Like yeah, poison? the tentacles are now oozing your blood onto the floor. Oh. No, I was thinking about something that might be poisonous. But no, no, only your blood. Now, if anyone has Which? the medicine skill... healing. The healing why skill, sorry. Have, yep. Why do I have to have medicine? No, if so, anyone has the healing skill, they can try and bandage Zimrika's wounds. A successful healing roll will restore two stamina to him. Wait a second. You don't have to have that skill. You to don't. Use that skill, do you? No, anyone can attempt it. So what's it called again? Healing. So anyone actually got everyone know, I have got... I have a point in healing. The six basic stat everything that I'm not trained in specifically yep mm. so does anyone actually have the healing skill I have the healing skill which will be six as well won't it yeah yep so you might well, as well that's, that's better that's better that he does it than me yep as he has the specific skill give, give me a skill roll then oh dear no, you fail. So he, he gets no... Mind you, it could have been worse. You could have rolled a double six and inflicted a point of damage, which you didn't. So, unfortunately, the bandaging's not very uh, professional. and It doesn't really do an awful lot. But mm. it's the thought that counts. Lovely. That is what I would say when you engage a enthusiastic amateur. Yeah. It's the taking part. It's the, it's the trying your best. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your best is only good enough if it's consistent and persistent. I won't bother. So, there is the man on the floor. Two men on the floor, in fact. Now we've defeated the creatures that killed these, let's take time to search this room carefully. Right, so the cloth was a, fo a sort of lair of theirs. Yeah, well, I take it there's nothing in there. No, there's nothing in there. Um, but in the tomb robbers' packs are two bottles of holy water, ooh, ooh. a scroll, a coil of rope, four provisions, a lantern, and three flasks of oil. What's that yeah. scroll? Right, well, you have the attune talent. Yep. So you're you... in that piffle about oil and food and all that rubbish. Well, you can you can identify the scroll. Yep. Um, so let me just drag that to the party pool to add it. The, the, the holy water obviously damages undead and has several other uses. But the scroll is a scroll of holy proclamation. Ooh. Um, when it is read aloud, the words have a startling effect on all undead creatures who hear it. Every undead creature within range takes 2d6 points of stamina damage and writhes as if in pain. It's a very potent anti-undead weapon. Is it a free spell? Anyone can read it. Mm -hmm. like anyone, anyone, like, you don't nah. need to have magic. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nope, you don't need to be magical. You've already got undead abilities, haven't you, Joe Man? No, me, but I'm saying, no. I'm just checking because I just want to know. Do that. Yeah, I'm not saying I want it, I'm just saying yeah, no, anyone, any, anyone, anyone can read it. Okay. Mm, well, so logically, Hulan can already do this. Zimrika can't cast any magic at all. So potentially, Joban or me should take it to enhance our probability of a success against any undead that we meet in future encounters. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, Zillik, it's okay if you want to carry it. I saw your eyes light up at the 
finding of some <laughs> magic. It's quite quite a potent uh, item, is this? I've shared too many meals with you, Hulang, just... and I'll snatch it out of his hand and whisk it away into my cloak and hide it. Just use it wisely. Okay. <laughs> Everything I do is wise. Well, we better take whatever else these poor... Yep, rope, provisions, lantern, rope. oil, a couple of bottles of holy water. Um, that, that holy water is important. That's not yeah. easy to get a hold of. Maybe give one to Sim Ricker and one to Joban. How much so is God. holy water worth, Graham? I'll oh, evaluate it. Uh, hang on, I can just look it up. So we've got a lot of undead killing abilities spread around the party. Um, yep, holy water will be under... Uh, tw- 20, good, 20, 20 gold pieces a, a vial. This is wow. worth 20 gold pieces a bottle. This is more than I've made in my entire life. Oh. Yeah, it's quite really? expensive, it's holy water. Well, I mean, all right. It's more than I've ended up saving. Well, but there are no exits from here, and you please. can see, and you can see why um, the footprints didn't return. Yeah. Can I actually um, deduce why holy water is so potential, is it, or is that like novice level ability? No, I mean holy holy water is very potent against undead and so on, and it, it does. It's also useful for sorcerers as well for uh, the resurrection spell. Well, 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 all of you lot, get your mitts off this stuff. (laughs) A sorcerer can resurrect us with a vine of this. He can't. Well, it's worth pointing out. It is worth pointing out he can't cast it yet. Who? Who the? Excuse me, he couldn't even balance my wound. (laughs) He potentially learn this and bring you back from the dead. Yes. Amazing. Not hanging yeah. out with no amateurs. Zim, you're not having it. I don't want it. Not <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. It is Joe Ban all the way for holy water. Right. So Joe Ban is forced to take the holy water, and um, but there's no exits from this room. So we have got a technical issue, Graham. What's that? Haven't you noticed? Next what? Me. You're not dying. You're just wounded, aren't you? Not in the game. Oh. Uh, oh, what are you? You're still in the game for me. Yeah, you're still in the game, according to this. Yeah, What's going mean? on, then? Hang on. What we'll do, we'll just pause the recording just for a second um, and get you back in the game. Okay, so as we had a few uh, technical problems there, which took a few minutes to sort out, what we've done is we've finished session two there. So we leave our characters, having just defeated the blood lurchers in the room with a big pile of cloth. Quite where they're going to go next is anybody's guess. I'm assuming they're probably going to go south along the corridor, but we shall find out in part three of this introductory session. So join me next time uh, to find out if they can finally escape the um, dungeons uh, under the sewers.